now thank you so much for watching this Delete tv where we talk about everything and when i mean everything i mean like a bitch phone just fell and when i mean everything i mean it's time for another episode of happy hour with angie and if you're new to this segment basically i call it happy hour because um i'm gonna be reading y'all questions and like stuff like that that y'all need advice on and some of y'all question me making a bitch want to drink but since i'm almost six months pregnant i can't so so if you would like to be a part of this segment if you have anything that you need advice on um or whatever go ahead and e you can either email me or you can text me, which text message is obviously the quickest way. My number to text is 504-702-7595. So I'll put it down there and also I'll put it in the description box as well. For some of you who like to email me, you can always email me at MissAngeliqueTV, the number one, at gmail.com. Uh, I'll put that below as well. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with the emails. And also if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe because you don't want to miss my next video and my next story time. Because you know, we have all types of stories and stuff to talk about so don't forget to hit that subscribe button okay first email is hi angelique my name is blank um and i'm in my last year of high school and my prom is coming up in a few months i don't want to be the only one without a date i like this guy and he is kind of popular at my school and he's in my history class but i don't know how to talk to him without everyone knowing my business i asked my best friend what should i do because she knows him better than i do but she wasn't really a big help he isn't like the other guys in my school and I really like him. How do I get to know someone? Please help. P.S. Love your videos. Thanks, boo. Um, how do you get to know him? Um, normally, it's like the other way around. Like, the normal situation where, like, a guy talks to a girl. Because in your case, um, you're going to be the one talking to him. So, as far as how to get to know him, if you really want to get to know him, then I would say start off by, like talking to him like it was like side side talk and if you don't if you don't know what side talk is side talk is basically like okay y'all in history class together so say y'all had an assignment that was due or a test or whatever and you just say something like what's your answer was for number one did you understand this because i really understand this can you explain it to me like side talk like that that way he can start acknowledging you every day side talk even more like try to side talk as much as possible and eventually like if y'all seem to kind of like click or connect um then slide on your number or something like just see how it goes from there like if he seems standoffish then i wouldn't really push too hard because it may be that he either got a girlfriend or he's not interested so you don't never want to seem thirsty if he seems like he interested then go ahead and slide on your number Side talk again if you start texting, just become his friend first. Like, just because y'all going to prom don't mean y'all got to be dating, right? Just see where that goes, okay? Hey, Angelique, I'm one of your subscribers. I'm from Baton Rouge and was wanting to move to Houston because Houston have way more than Baton Rouge. By the way, Baton Rouge is in Louisiana, which is like about an hour or so away from New Orleans, which is where I'm from. I have visited Houston a lot and enjoyed myself. Also, Houston is always hiring and have more job opportunities. I'm young and my credit isn't the best at the moment. I wanted to know what apartments do you recommend that don't check credit? You just need to put a deposit down. I just want an apartment um, like that for now. And then I can move somewhere else when I get it together. Um, all apartments are going to check your credit. But not all apartments check like necessarily your credit score. Whenever I say check your credit, like they'll check... If you have any broken leases or any evictions or some um, apartments, check if you have any car repossessions as well. Um, but those are the main three things. Like, you don't have to have a high credit score to get an apartment because they're not really checking your credit score. That's more if you're looking for a house than they are actually um, checking your credit score. Also, they're going to be um, checking your background, like for criminal and stuff like that. So as long as you're not a felon, as long as you don't have no broken leases or evictions, uh, or repossessions then you should be okay if you do have any eviction if you do have any eviction or a broken lease then some apartments will either turn you down or make you um, pay like a higher security deposit but um if that is the case then i would su suggest you call like whatever apartments you're looking at first just to verify if they would 
take it or not if you do have a broken lease or an eviction i'm not saying that you do um but i would just double check because you don't want to like pay the application fee and stuff like that and then end up being denied so it's good to kind of know what you're getting yourself into or what they're actually looking for before you actually apply hi angelique I, I am 18 and my boyfriend is 19. I struggle with depression, anxiety, and PTSD since 14 years old. We live together currently. We both have been up in heads lately. My boyfriend does things and then when I get mad at him, he catches an attitude. He would ignore me and when he does respond, he responds with, I don't know or I guess. I love him and he loves me, but he constantly lies to me and don't tell me the truth until months later. We both sacrifice a lot for each other. He treats me like a queen on a regular basis and is always up under me. He's a lover boy and the crazy part is that I ask him damn near every day if he has something to tell me. And I'm damn near his wife with the shit I do for him. Um, possibly pregnant too. And I always tell him we can work through anything as long as he just be open and honest with me. I don't know what to do. What should I do? First of all, you don't need to have a baby with him. That's one thing you should, shouldn't do is to not have a baby. And I say this because just because y'all live together and boyfriend and girlfriend don't mean y'all need to have a baby together. Don't mean you need to start a family because if you can't even simply trust him, if he lying about small stuff like I said, you said that he, uh, he constantly lies to you and don't tell you the truth until months later. That's not a good trait at all. Like, like at all that's a bad sign because if he's lying to you about small stuff then he could be lying to you about big stuff and if he's lying to you about big stuff then you know for a fact he's lying to you about small stuff as well so i wouldn't recommend having a baby with somebody you can't even trust so i would recommend you talking to him maybe even giving him an ultimatum like look my nigga i want to start a family with you i want i want to grow and build with you and I need for you to tell me if there's anything that I don't know that I need to know because at this point like if I find out anything else in the future like months later I don't care if it's years later if I find anything else out then it's gonna be fucking dumb because I, I can't deal with I can't be with a person that I can't trust so yeah and it put some heat underneath that asshole girl because niggas will try you they will test you they will go as far as they can go with you especially if they know you're just gonna forgive them so Okay, so now let's get into the text messages. Hey, Miss Angelique. First, I just wanted to say I love you so much and you keep it so real. I'm 15 and 18 weeks pregnant with a baby boy. Ever since I found out I was pregnant, I lost a lot of friends and it seems like when I go to school, everybody against me or talk about me. But nobody's ever tried me and I'm glad because I'm just trying to get as much schoolwork done as I can. So after I have my son, I don't have a lot of catching up. But anyways, my question is, how did you go to school when you were pregnant with your daughter? And like, how was it after you had your daughter? Thanks. And I love you for making a platform for where your fan can come and talk to you. I love you too. First of all, I ain't got no fans. <laughs> I got angels. Like, y'all my angels. Y'all my, 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 you know, friends. Like, y'all, I don't call nobody fans. Like, bitch, I'm not a celebrity. So, <laughs> thank you so much um, for those kind of words. Um, as far as how did I go to school while I was pregnant, um, so I got pregnant with my daughter, um, uh, towards the end of my sophomore year in high school, obviously. The following year came up, I was a junior, and I was about five months at that time, but it wasn't really for me, honestly, I'm just giving you my opinion, it wasn't really for me because, mind you, my school was huge and every class was on the opposite side of the building, and so... I would have to sometimes like leave class like five minutes early just to make sure that I get to my class on time uh, and to make sure nobody bumping into my stomach and stuff like that. Um, as far as the people, I didn't really necessarily have problems with people. I just noticed that the friends that I had like my sophomore and my freshman year, they kind of like disappeared, faded away um in a sense because i mean at the end of the day i'm pregnant now we don't have nothing in common like i'm not going to the football games the basketball games anymore i was no longer on the dance team once i got pregnant like all of that went away and it kind of bothered me in a way in the beginning but then i eventually grew up to like fuck friends like the fuck that's probably why i'm so anti-social now like i count on one hand how many friends that i actually talk to on a daily basis um i don't really talk to people like that and that's that I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't really like having single friends who ain't got kids. I tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> so um, my friends are either ma married with kids or just got kids 
or was engaged at some point like they all got kids so the few friends that i have we can all relate so i wouldn't really worry too much about that friends gonna be friends like friends come and go you in high school anyway so nine times out of ten the friends that you meet in high school you're not gonna no, if they even alive five years from now <laughs> like that's how i feel like unless i have you on facebook i don't even know if you still exist so how was it after i had my daughter after i had my daughter i was homeschooled so i obviously didn't go back to school but um it was fine like i did my school stuff um uh, i ended up getting a job at 16 yeah i got a job at 16 that was my first job i started working at um taco bell and I actually got that job whenever my daughter was like three months old so I had just had her and I just I started working and stuff that's why like now I'm so used to working because I've been working for a while so um don't worry about some friends just do what you gotta do go to school if that's what you're doing keep it up and go home like fuck everybody else because at the end of the day they ain't buying no diapers they ain't gonna be up with you in the middle of the night whenever you have the baby they ain't gonna do none of that so fuck them friends Go to school to get your education and come home and lay down, eat a ball of food like I be doing because we pregnant <laughs> and just enjoy yourself being pregnant. Like, don't even worry about none of that. Hey, I love your videos. My question is, how young do you think is too young to have a baby? I'm 22 and living on my own and I'm ready to have a baby with my boyfriend. How young is too young? Obviously, if you're still in high school like I was, that's too young to me. Um, and even after high school, sometimes it could be still too young. Honestly, well, it is still too young. Even after high school, if you're, because we're the same age. You're 22, I'm 22, and I still feel like I'm too young. Um, but I, I also matured a lot, and so, I don't know, I kind of grew up a little fast. As far as you, um, I don't recommend you having a baby with your boyfriend. Just because you have your own place, just because you're 22, don't mean, oh, hey, let's have a baby, because, I mean anybody could just have a baby but you have to be prepared like what what are your dreams in life what are your aspirations what do you want to do five years from now where do you want to be five years from now like i don't i don't really know what your passion is or what you have or what type of goals you have in mind but i do know for a fact if you have a baby a lot of those goals that you may have are going to be really really hard for you to accomplish not saying that, that it's impossible but because it's very possible but why have a baby that's just gonna slow you down you know what i'm saying like right now you at an age where you have a choice like okay do i want to go this route or do i want to go that route and i feel like the choice should be is to wait a little bit longer because who say you're gonna be with you i'm not talking down i'm just saying i'm just keeping it up keeping it 100 um but who say you're gonna be with him five years from now i don't know how long y'all been together right now but girl don't have no baby right now hold off as long as possible hopefully you have a ring by then i know i'm the last one who's talking about a ring because i ain't got one but I'm just saying, if if you were my daughter, I would tell you this. I would tell my daughter the same thing. So that's why I'm telling you the same thing. Yeah, everybody loves babies. Babies are so cute, cuddly, but babies stink. They fart, they shit all day, they throw up, and they all they want to fucking do is eat and cry all day. Hey Angelique, I am 13 and I am pregnant. My baby father moved, um, moved states two weeks ago. I haven't told him or, or my mom yet. The thing is, I had a train ran on me, so I do not know if he's my baby father 100%. Please give me advice. He didn't really give me that many details. I mean, I'm sure if the train that was ran on you was something that you didn't want, then you would have told me. But the fact that you didn't tell me that, you just casually said that you had a train ran on you. Um makes me feel like that was something that you gave consent to happen to you um because if you didn't then i feel like you would have told me that you you know that something else happened but because you didn't <laughs> you say your boyfriend first of all how is he your okay he's your boyfriend but he ran a train on you with other people so he's your boyfriend you you pregnant you haven't told your mom first of all you need to tell your mom fuck him for right now tell your mama okay because number one you need to get checked up you understand what i'm saying you need to get checked for you know not saying that you do have this have any of these god forbid but i'm just keeping it real you need to go to the doctor get yourself checked up make sure you don't have any stds or anything like that um also need to check on your baby as well like i said you gotta tell your mama you gotta tell your mama first in order for you to even go get checked up probably so <laughs> tell your mama all right if you're scared to tell your mama tell somebody else 
that are of age in your family and help them tell tell your mama with you you gotta do that because that's what i had to do um as far as your baby father you don't know if it's his baby or not i mean he ran the train on you with other people so i wouldn't understand why he would even be upset about it because i mean he was there whenever you was getting this train ran on you right so he should obviously no if you're pregnant then it's a possibility that the baby might not even be his so that shouldn't even be something you, you should be afraid about because it's not about it's not like you cheated on him or anything like that with other niggas like you and your boyfriend and other guys were having sex together so he knows like i mean it's obvious that stuff like this can happen i don't know what you was doing i ain't passing no judgment but um girl Hey, I watch your videos and I love you. You're so funny and pretty. I love you so much, but my question is, what is the best part of being a mom and what is the worst part? Thank you, girl. Um, I love you too. What is the best part about being a mom? Well, let's, let's go about the, the worst part. I can't even say it's the worst part because I'm so used to it at this point that nothing bothers me. I can't say anything is bad or anything is good. But to a, a first time parent, I would say, as a first time parent rather, like I would have said the worst part is it being very time consuming. And I say time consuming, like you have to give all your time. You got to make sure, like if you have a newborn, make sure the diaper clean, make sure he, the baby fed make sure all of this like it's, it's really time consuming and you don't really have that much time to yourself my kids are a lot older now um so i don't really have to worry about that much i mean i'm about to have another baby so that's about to turn into the opposite <laughs> very soon i don't look at anything as technically as necessarily the worst part anymore because like I said, i've been a mom for six years now so it is what it is the best part about being a parent is just being able to watch your reflection like your shadow grow up and to become like whoever they're going to become and i look at my kids every day and it's like wow like i created that human being like i created that motherfucker like damn it's amazing to watch them grow um watch them learn new things like my daughter she's in kindergarten now so she'll be saying some stuff that i didn't even know she knew what that meant like girl how do you even know what that means <laughs> i enjoy someone depending on me and needing me you know that makes that pushes me to want to do better because i have someone who needs me so I, I gotta do better like i can't give up like that's not even an option so yeah hello my name is and i need some advice so about two years ago i tried to kill myself and of course ended up at the hospital long story short while in the hospital a video of me surfaced all over the internet claiming i was a hoe and did all this stuff to my best friend who happens to be my ex-girlfriend weird to be friends with my ex i know Anywho, I asked her about it and she said she had never seen the video and that I made it up because I went crazy. But everyone where we are from knew about it and they also bullied me for it. So my question is, what should I do and should I not trust her because now she makes certain comments that lead me to believe she has something to do with it. What type of comments she making? First of all, I'm sorry that, you know, you went through that tough time. Don't do that again, girl. Like, life is so much more than that. Like, it is whatever you were going through to, to drive you to that point. Like, just keep stay prayed up. As far as your ex-girlfriend slash ex-best friend, exes are, aren't the best to be friends with. And I say this because certain stuff like this do happen and you don't know if they're jealous, if they're jealous of you, if they secretly want you, like you don't know any of that. So it's like certain stuff that happens, like you don't know what, whether to trust them or, or not, just like this situation. So I wouldn't trust her. I cut everything, cut all ties off with her because you don't know if she has something to do with it, especially if she's making like comments about it, like what, what you said. Yeah, she was making comments to lead you to believe that she has something to do with it. So, trust your gut. Like, trust it. Because I promise you, if you're feeling that way, then it's for a reason. You don't know if she has something to do with it or not. And she's obviously not going to tell you the truth. So, I would just cut it all off. You need to be around positivity. She felt like you were making it up because you were going crazy. You wasn't going crazy. You were dealing with some stuff. So, that ain't going crazy. Like, people deal with shit all the time. So, if she's saying some stuff like that, then I would definitely... Like, that right there would have made me want to cut her the fuck off. Because what the fuck you mean? I'm making this up because I'm going crazy bitch like the fuck so yeah i would definitely just cut it off cut her off find new friends find better friends and don't befriend your ex no more because exes ain't the ones to be friends with i have been with him 
same set the previous September. So that means if that's the truth, then this nigga was with her half of our fucking relationship and I knew nothing about it. And then she also said that he had made it seem like he was living by himself out here in Houston, how he was just, you know, getting his life together and how he was inviting her to come 